Wrestling Observer Live, Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. So listen, everybody on the Twitch chat here, not everybody, a few people don't care, it appears, but Tony Khan yesterday said there was going to be an announcement that was going to shift the balance of power in wrestling. And we discussed what could it possibly be that would shift the balance of power in wrestling. And, you know, we, maybe it's, can't be The Rock. I mean, who could it be? Blah, 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 blah. We said Brock, yes. Okay, so I'm watching the show last night, and I thought, I thought that the deal that was going to shift the balance of power in wrestling was Shaq. And then later, Dave believes that what's going to shift the balance of power in wrestling is Pac. Now, a couple of things here, okay? Listen, let me make this abundantly clear. If I were Tony Khan, no, absolutely I would not tweet that something is going to shift the balance of power in wrestling. If it's going to be the debut, it's not even the debut, they teased that Shaq was going to be there, or the return of Pac. I would never have done that, okay? I never would have done it. In fact, I spoofed it today, and everyone took it way too seriously, so I deleted the tweet. So anyway, with that said, okay, there's a couple of ways to look at this. Number one, Tony Khan may have been tweeting as AW's Tony Khan. And AEW's Tony Khan, when he talks about the balance of power in wrestling, he's talking about AEW. And the return of Pac, in fact, in storylines in AEW, it is shifting the balance of power. Pac is coming back. Eddie Kingston had taken over the group. Pac is pissed off about it. Pac and Eddie Kingston are obviously going to fight over it. Okay, in storyline, forget the giant world of wrestling, okay? Let's talk about in AEW. Pac's return is, in fact going to shift everything around here now let me repeat this because people are going to listen to this and talk about how i'm being paid i wouldn't have said this if i were tony khan you got it i wouldn't have done it now another one do i actually think that Shaq feuding with cody rhodes is going to shift the balance of power in the wider world of professional wrestling no i do not okay but let me tell you something. The whole idea of a guy like Shaq coming in is that they want to get the words or the letters AEW out to a wider audience, to people that have no idea what AEW is. And somebody mentioned this morning, they said, is there a better guy than Shaq to be involved with AEW? Because you could do this inside the NBA, have them talking about AEW on that show, and wherever else Shaq goes, and... You're getting Cody Rhodes' name out there, and you could promote this and try to get the word out about AEW. Obviously, if you look at the AEW numbers, like, the people that watch AEW, they love the show. They're watching it with their friends and their family, probably more their family. 1.7 viewers per home. That's, that's the numbers that we had in the Attitude Era. The people that know about AEW love it. But guess what? If you get out of that bubble, nobody knows about it. And so the idea is we need to raise... The whatever you call it. We need to get the AEW name out there. We need to get out that there's AEW wrestling. It's on TNT, and Shaq's going to help with that. Now, ultimately, long term, if the same number of normal human beings on the street knew about AEW as knew about WWE, that, in fact, might shift the balance of power in wrestling. But is Shaq showing up on Wednesday going to do that? No. So, again, I would not have tweeted that, but I think people are getting a little bit I think we're kind of blowing this up here into something more than it is. Tony Khan thinking that this is going to help. Maybe he does. Maybe he thinks that this is going to shift the balance of power in wrestling. That's very different than, for example, teasing that a Goldberg is going to be on the show and then he's not there. Or building up matches every week that you just don't deliver and there's like no reason for it. It's not like someone went down with COVID or, or whatever. It's just like you advertise something and then you didn't do it. That's a problem. Am I wrong about this? I, I don't think so. And there's the other aspect to this where there's corporate synergy involved, I'm sure. You know, I think they're trying to start the NBA season back up. They were talking early January, then they were talking, you know, around Christmas time. I don't know, but guess what? It's coming back to to TNT. 
and it's one of their best sports properties that they have. It's probably the one they're most known for because of inside the NBA and all of that sort of stuff. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, Papa John's is an official sponsor of the National Football League, and Shaq is very much involved in that. I'm sure somebody at AEW would like to raise the profile of the company a little bit more if you can get into bed with Shaq that way. So there's all sorts of things that may be at play here as well too as to why Shaq is involved do we think it's really going to end up being Shaq and Cody could it end up being a situation where Kenny Smith or Chris Jericho joins the inner circle I don't know we got a long time to go before their pay-per-view which means we got a lot of TV time to fill and I'm not necessarily down on stuff like this I don't think it's a it's a stunt I think well it, it, it's a stunt but I don't think it's a particularly ridiculous one or anything like that you know people will roll their eyes but there's always celebrity involvement in pro wrestling always has been always will be and if you can figure out a way to use them and and energize your fan base and maybe get some other people involved great and i think Shaq is actually a really really good person to probably do that with so no balance of power has shifted with him certainly not definitely with Pac either although i do understand i guess from a storyline point of view of why everything gets shaken up the bastard is back you know we haven't seen him in forever we've seen him talking to himself we've seen him going crazy now he's in the ring and he confronts another crazy man in Eddie Kingston, uh, and they're both uh, involved maybe going after the championship. So who, who knows? Who knows where that will go? But at least it was something exciting to end the show if it didn't change the balance of things and the deal with Shaq. You know, I think that one just speaks for itself. All right, so a couple of notes from both shows. We had a Cody segment where they debuted Jade Cargill, who apparently is going to be, I don't know if she's going to be the manager of Shaq or if she's just the one bringing him in, but they're building up Shaq versus Cody. And apparently Jade was on WWE's radar and they never pulled the trigger. And so here she is in AEW. And I don't know why sometimes WWE pulls the trigger and sometimes they don't. Like Ricochet was on their radar forever, but for whatever reason, they just never took him for a long time. They totally missed on him. And then, ironically, when they got him, they missed on him anyway. But we'll see where this leads. And then Brandy, by the way, she was not happy with this Jade out there stroking her husband's hair. So she came out and she cut the promo of a lifetime on this woman. It was awesome. <laughs> it was, was the best something. promo of her career. Well. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.